So it's always been about our relationship with, 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 with the Lord. And, and, and many believers place more value on their doctrine than they do on their father. Yeah. And their inheritance that he has set aside for and has become spiritually dysfunctional in their relationship with him. And I'm telling you, we feel like, I, I, I know it, we tell the devil you can huff and puff and blow our house down because we got this, this facade thinking that because we've been well instructed in the ways of the Lord that this is God. This is his way. And I'm telling you, that it's not, it's going to, I'm telling you, it's going to have to bring you to a level of intimacy with him. Amen? Okay. Every doctor is supposed to be an invitation for divine encounters and not a substitute of something tucked away in our minds to make us more stable. So we think if more word, scriptures we hide in our mind, we're stable. We're infused, we top heavy, we got a, a, a levels of knowledge, but out of that out of that release in you, out of that concept or that thought that he's bringing to you, it's supposed to make you more sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Make you more what? Sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Supposed to cleave hard. To the Holy Spirit. I tell you that we got you're supposed to cleave hard. Oh, to the Holy Spirit. To the Holy Spirit. Because doctrine without revelation, function, and experience would never satisfy your God-given core desires. Those unclaimed promises, those things that lay dormant in you, you'll never be able to if we just leave it as sola script. Torah, that's what they say in Latin. So scriptures of scriptures only. And Martin Luther, blessed his soul. If you don't know who he is, he was a reformer in the 1500s. 1517, he started all this mess, broke away from that harlot system, and initiated the Protestant movement. 1517. Matter of fact, it was October 31st, 1517. Halloween. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Can you imagine the Catholic Church looking at him and saying, what is this nut doing in that costume? Yeah. <laughs> On Halloween, there was a, a, an edict by the Spirit of God, by someone who was third. And I'm telling you, I, from that particular act, with the urgency to revert back to the orthodoxy of scriptures, we haven't quite understood the progressive side. Although every generation can recognize that there is progressively something that God is bringing to us. But it's one thing to know in doctrine that God wants to bring it to us. But it's a whole other thing. What do you want to bring it in function and experience? Well now you grab a hold of it and you do like 1 John 1 says we handle the word of life. Remember they said, we've seen it, we talked with it, but we've handled it. And I've encountered the very doctrine that I've testified of. I've searched the scriptures, and I found him. Oh, the lover of my soul. The one who, who exemplified what life is all about. This is what we need. And the more and more you hide it in your heart with this, from this angle, from, from this interpretation, this, this level of application, the more of his word that you have in your heart, the clearer you see with the eyes of your heart. And the easier it is to walk by faith. You say, man, the eyes of my understanding is being enlightened. He conceals some things. I'm searching it out because that's the honor for, for kings. He didn't hide it from me. He had it for me. And it's not just for me. We found out in Deuteronomy 22, 29 and 29. It says that the secret things belong to the Lord. And those things that are revealed belong to us. Yes. And not just to us, but our children's children. Yes. That's why I like things like Isaiah 59 and 21. Where he said, I put my words out. When he says, I've hidden you in my hand. But I put my spirit, I put my spirit on you. put my word in your mouth. And for a generation... Generations to generations. 
Amen. Bring it on up here, Isaiah. As for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit is upon thee. So you can't, they're inseparable. The spirit and my words, which I put in thy mouth. Why? Because it's supposed to be released out of our mouth. We're not supposed to hold on to it. You see, if it never comes out of your mouth, it, it, it'll never have an opportunity to come into your life. You can meditate on the scriptures all you want to, but you can still become a Pharisee and a sad, sad you see. They should not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed. See, how many generations? I'm going to put it in your mouth. It should not depart out of your mouth, nor out of the mouth of your seed, or your, not out of your, your daughters or sons and your grandkids. From henceforth and forever. Word in the spirit, working together. Generational blessing. You're talking about generational blessing. It's not what I told you, I said, what God placed in one generation, he's preparing for the next generation. So we can't get weary of well-doing. Just because we, we don't have the instant gratification. I, I, know, it as, I know it well in my soul. I, I, I can't, you know, in spite of, there's some things that I know and I see spiritually that have not yet come to fruition. And I got to hold on to that dream, hold on to that thought, hold on to that unction from God. Even in spite of everything that's outside of my sense, sensory uh, realm, my perceptions in my eyes. You get what I'm saying? My five senses want to say, want to tell me my destiny. Want to tell me what I can and can't do. So I have to hold on within myself. That's why making sure your heart is right. Making sure that you, your mind is being renewed. So you can contain whatever God has placed in you in C form. Amen? Amen. The, that's why we need teachers and preachers and men and women of God that will stand up with their feet flat, with a trumpet in their mouth. You know, people use the scripture, uh, spread, uh, cry loud, spare not. Remember over with it, Isaiah 58 and 1? Mm -hmm. Everybody used that. Pentecost. And everybody talked about it we, we're becoming a trumpet. Isaiah 58 and 1, because some of y'all will read your Bible. Isaiah 58 and 1. Oh Lord, help us. In fact, it's only one you can go up. Yeah. Cry loud, spread out, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. See, that's why you always can say that, that that the trumpet in the Old Testament, I mean the New Testament, the book of Revelation, is a voice. Revelation 1, 10 and 12 tells you that the voice is a trumpet. That's why we need voices from God. We don't need echoes, we need voices from God. We need authentic voices of reformation. Amen. That can cry out and spare not. No preferential treatment. Mm -hmm. No child left behind. Mm -hmm. that, that's what it means. That's my interpretation. Cry out and spare not. They just tell you, Apostle, I just don't, stuff just don't touch me. I just don't really feel it. <laughs> cry. <laughs> don't even give it a chance. Never pray. Oh, Never God. got before the Lord. Never cut anything off. Never secluded themselves to say, okay, God, this is what my pastor says. Confirm your word. Right. Yes. I used to do it. Yes. I still do it, and I'm just saying the past tense because that's what I had to do to get to where I am. Right. Yes. My pastor would bring something that didn't fit my mind at the time. I couldn't conceive it or perceive it, but then I had to go and get in my prayer closet and get yes. before God on my own. He couldn't go there for me. From the least to the greatest, this covenant is available for us all. So when I got before the Lord, I allowed the Spirit of God to witness to my heart that this did come from the throne. Yes. Yes. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. And that's all we know. We just think of sins. Show them what they're missing the mark. So we need a voice like a trumpet. And that's what we're doing. And that's what I'm doing. Amen. That's why we need churches. We need churches, not just churches for sake of having a church. We need people connected to the churches. We need people committed to the church. We need people connected to the church. Whatever the overall theme that God has given to a particular church in the earth, we need to be able to say, hey, that is my portion. That is my assignment. Hmm? Yeah. Unfortunately. Too many places, not this church, so don't worry about it. Well, maybe. In, in most churches, we give Bibles to people who often fail to help them understand God's words. And a, a misunderstanding of God's word is too important. 
It's too, too important for misunderstanding and traditions to rob us of the central message. Mm -hmm. What? The Lord is looking for fruit. I, I can't shake James 5 and 7. It just so resonated in my spirit. The Lord will have long, the Father have long patience for the precious fruit of the earth. Man, that thing is just, I can get up in the morning, I can still hear it like just in my head. He has long patience for the precious fruit of the earth. Girl, you on your, boy, you doing your thing. <laughs> Come, until the coming of the Lord, behold, the husbandman waited for the precious fruit of the earth and has long patience for it until he received the early and latter rain. We postpone that. That is a now scripture. Early and latter rain. What he started, he's going to finish. That's what it means, the latter rain, to finish what he started. He sowed a seed at Calvary. That seed got up out of the grave. Seed spent time with them in the upper room. The seed, for 40 days that seed spent time with them. Talking about what, church? No, talking about kingdom. Specified the message he had, he carried, he possessed. He came, he was resurrected to ratify the new covenant that is based on the kingdom. The seed then all of a sudden shed his, his earthly tabernacle again. Not fashioned with man's hand. And spilled out the spirit that he carried and multiplied himself in 120. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That's what God wants us to get to see. When you read the Bible, it should be a whole nother level. You get in there not because you're trying to make sure make right wrong. I mean, make wrong right. You're not trying to get in it to past time. You're not trying to get in it just because it's, a, it's your duty. You don't do, as a believer, we don't do nothing for duty. Religious people do it out of duty. We do it out of devotion. Mm -hmm. Everything flows for us out of devotion. Because we have it's a heart thing. It's not a hidden thing. Duty is out of your head. Devotion is from the heart. You do it from your heart, it's easy. See, when I get some folks in here devoted, we ain't never got to worry about not having nobody on Wednesday nights. Mm -hmm. 